Hey, I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist, and in this video, I'm going to bring you something extra special that I've never done before, at least not to this length. Um, I'm going to be modeling a full phonics lesson for kindergarten, followed by a full phonics lesson for first grade, followed by a full phonics lesson for, you guessed it, second grade. So super excited about this. Got lots of ideas to share with you. I have lots of stuff. I'm gonna use my document camera. Um, I'm also doing a giveaway. So at the very end of the video, I am going to name a winner and that winner is going to get either, so your choice, you can get, if you're a kindergarten teacher, well, whatever you teach, you can choose these letter bean bags. Um, I don't have an example here, but they're just different alphabet letters, capital and lowercase on bean bags. You can do all kinds of fun things like put a hula hoop, toss the bags, find this bag, put this bag on your head, all sorts of fun stuff. So you can either choose from the alphabet bean bags or I will send you these like phonics kind of tile things. So this would be probably more appropriate if you teach first or second grade because they're like, word chunks and blends and digraphs and all sorts of things that the kids can use to make words. So those are super fun as well. And again, you can choose your prize. All you have to do to enter is get some comments in at any point during this video, because at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through those comments and I am going to choose my winner and I will be sending my winner either the alphabet bean bags or the word building titles totally your choice. So anything in the comments, you can say, hi, tell me what grade you teach, ask a question as we go along here. Just make sure to get your comment in because again, at the end, I'm going to pull my winner and that winner can email us and you will get your prize. Yay. Okay. So Karen, amazing. I am excited too. I've never done like a full, I mean, I've done like a full phonics lesson, but never like a kinder first and second grade. Jill says those prizes sound fantastic, amazing. All right, so many awesome teachers here. So I guess let's just go ahead and dive into it. Um, in the like description of the little video here, I kind of outlined the different lessons that I'm gonna teach, but so you know where these resources come from, the actual lessons themselves and the vast majority of the materials I'm gonna show you come from my phonics program, From Sounds to Spelling, this has been a lifesaver for me personally, even though I wrote it, um, because so, so, so many times I was using phonics programs or reading programs that would have certain pieces, but they just wouldn't have everything I needed. Like they were missing decodable text, they didn't have fun games for the kids, or they didn't have any games at all. So this also was a huge help to me when I was teaching virtually last year. So I think most of us are in person, but if you happen to be teaching virtually, you know, this can also be used that way as well. Okay, so the lessons are gonna come from this. And then I'm also gonna show you like some follow-up activities that the kids might do after the lesson is, you know, like a center or independent work. And so the follow-up activities are a different resource. From Sounds to Spelling gives you a ton of materials. And honestly, it's, you're not gonna necessarily need other phonics games. However, some of our teachers have still purchased or won um, a copy of the No Prep Phonics game. So these games are in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Um, they're 40, the bundles are 40 to 50% off right now through Monday, September 27th. So enormous discount just because they're brand new. So those are my TPT store. They are separate from, from the phonics program. If you use the phonics program, which you, I also have a coupon code for you in the chat or in the um, little description there don't necessarily need these, but it's totally up to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in with kindergarten. If you teach second grade, I know it'll be a lot to get through, but at the same time, I especially think that the first grade lesson that I'm gonna teach will be really helpful um, because a lot of the same concepts can be applied to the second grade as well. And again, if you teach kindergarten, don't necessarily go away because you can still grab some ideas from the first grade lesson for sure. Okay, lots of amazing comments. Ashley, Lynn, Natasha, Kim, so glad to have you. If you're just joining me, make sure you let me know in the chat um, what grade you teach, say hi, whatever. I'm also curious, do you all have a phonics program at your school? So in the chat, would you just let me know yes or no? Um, it has always amazed me how many schools don't provide a phonics program, so I'm just curious what the makeup is here. 
Okay, so let's get into kindergarten. Um, I am going to need to do my little document camera. I have so much stuff here, <laughs> so many things to show you. Um, so I have on my screen, and this is what I'm going from, I have the lesson plans. Again, from Sounds of Spelling has this lesson plan totally written out for you and all the other ones for your whole year. Um, so I'm gonna be looking off of that, but I also need to, okay. I feel like I wanna change the setup. Uh, it's not gonna let me, is it gonna let me? Nope, okay. So not amazing, cause I can't make it super huge, but I can also hold up stuff here, so that's fine. Flavia says, no official phonics program at my school. Julie, Natasha has, yes, a phonics program, foundations. A lot of our foundation, the foundations teachers that I work with, they are using the no prep phonics game. So those can absolutely go with foundations, even though you have one. Okay, so we are gonna start with kindergarten. Um, and the first part of the kindergarten lesson plan, let me just move this down here. Um, the first part of the kindergarten lesson plan is actually going to be phonological awareness. So I have no stuff. It's just a listening game, two little listening games. Okay. In the program, what I do is I will have um, a page for you for transition activities. I like to keep this on my clipboard and it's just quick phonological awareness activities. You do like maybe when you're transitioning to lunch or they're in line waiting for something. It's just little things to sneak in throughout the day. However, the actual lesson does have a phonological awareness component, and that's what you're going to hear me do now. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you as if you were my kinders, so forgive me if I get into my Mrs. Ryan teacher voice a little bit. All right, so the first one I'm going to say, let's play a silly game. I'm going to think of different foods, but I'm not going to tell you the correct name for the food. I'll say a nonsense word that rhymes with the food. For example, if I'm thinking of apple, I might say maple. Isn't that silly? Are you ready to play? Okay. So the first one is rigetti. What food am I thinking of? And they would hopefully come up with spaghetti. We have played this before, by the way, at this point in the um, the program. And then I'm going to say um, whamburger. What do you think that is? And they would say hamburger, Rocco's, tacos. They may or may not get it quickly, and that's okay, but it's just like a fun spin on rhyming. Now this is obviously not the first time I'm introducing rhyming to them. We've practiced. This is just a variation because they practiced in other ways. So we're going to do that. It's pretty quick. And then we're going to play a different game. So you could, so sometimes kids will get confused between like phonological awareness um, activities. So what you could do is like you could do this first game sitting down and then you could have them do the next game standing up to kind of like just mentally give them a break and tell them, hey, this is something a little bit different. So there's no reason why we have to stand up. We don't have to stand up. But if you want to have them stand up and now I'll say, OK, now we're going to play a different game. I'm going to say a word and then you're going to add another word to the end of it. For example, if I say B, add hive at the end, then we get beehive. OK, now it's your turn. The word is art. Repeat, and then they say art. Art, add work at the end, and we get, they should say artwork, right? So I'm showing with one hand. Um, so then I'm gonna say, okay, the next one is egg. Say egg, they say egg. Egg, add plant at the end, and we get eggplant. So we go through just a couple of those. I think I have like six on the lesson plan. So this is very quick, right? We just kind of sit down, get it done. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my flashcards and I'm only going to take the letters that I've taught so far. So I am working in week seven of the kindergarten from Sounds to Spelling program. So I don't necessarily have the correct letters here. I just grabbed some, um, but they're just going to say the letter sounds real quick. Some days we do letter names in the um, lesson plan. It kind of like alternates what your review activities are. Again, this is very quick. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to do the blending drill. And this is one that I want to show you under the document camera. So that, again, is very quick. Everything I've done to this point is very quick. It's really important to have your stuff handy um, because these are little activities that don't take. Sorry, I'm not getting it straight. That's driving me crazy. Um, these are little activities that don't take long, but they're powerful. So we don't want to take up too much of the lesson with them. Nancy says, no formal program, downloaded your scope and sequence. Amazing. So glad. Interesting, Julie. I have not heard, or maybe somebody has told me the same thing about that program. 
All right, cool. So now we're gonna do the blending drill. In these stacks, I have only the letters that they've been taught so far, okay? I'm not throwing in any new letters. And we are going to blend sounds to read a word. This is something that they've done before. And you might think, be thinking, if you teach kindergarten week seven, wow, well, they're already blending. And it depends, right? So with some of your kids, yes, they will be saying the sounds and blending. But with many of your kids, you are going to have to provide a lot of support. And I'm going to show you how to provide that support now. So it's very simple. What you do is um, if you want to give them a lot of support, you just say, okay, listen, my turn. Odd pod. Okay, now let's do it together. And then together, me and the children, we say odd pod. Okay, now your turn. And now I'm quiet and they say odd pod. Okay, now are your kids fully able to blend and read CBC words at this point? No. I mean, maybe some of them are. If they are, that's amazing. But the point is that you're taking the letters that the kids are learning and you're showing them how they can be used to read real words. This is application. This is so important. Some kids will pick up on the letters and be interested in the letters, but other kids really need that illustration of like, okay, I'm learning the letters for purpose. And even if they don't need that for motivation, it, it helps them learn the letters, right? Because even though we're learning to read the CBC word, we are still practicing the letter sounds, okay? You might not even need to go through those flashcards because you're practicing the letter sounds as you go here. And again, these are only the sounds that the kids know. Now I'm going to flip it. I could flip the top one, I could flip the middle one, I could flip the last one. Again, these are only sounds that the kids have learned. Now we have a nonsense word, okay? If I work with English language learning students or kiddos who, um, like their vocabularies just aren't great for whatever reason, I might tell them ahead of time or after they blend to read that this is a nonsense word. It's not a real word. It's a silly word. Okay. But if I have a group of kids who I think that they're going to be able to figure out if it's a nonsense word or not, I'm not going to say anything. What I'm going to do is we're going to blend odd, lod, and then they're going to show me, is that a real word? Thumbs up. Or is it not a real word? Thumbs down. Even when I had pod up here, I would still, I didn't do it with you, but I would still do that. Is it a real word? Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs down. So um, you can pull in a little vocabulary there. But this, again, this goes pretty quickly. We're just flipping. And again, you know, we might have to blend the word three times for that level of support. You will find if you do this early on in the year, kindergarten teachers, and of course, first grade and second grade teachers, your kids will be ready to read and that process will become easier because they've seen blending so many times. And you don't even have to start with three sound words, right? You can just do, this is a nonsense word. Probably not a good one because odd is spelled with, you know, two Ds, but op, op. You can do two sound words as well, vowel consonant words, okay? So that is the blending drill. I know I'm talking a lot, but this again is going pretty quickly. It's the very beginning of the lesson. This is really just the warm up. And now we're gonna do a little bit of high frequency word work. Now this is day three of week seven in level K. Lots of numbers and letters, just kindergarten, week seven, day three. And the previous day, they did some work with high frequency words. So what you're gonna see here is not necessarily what it looks like every single day. This is just what it looks like on this particular lesson that I decided to do as an example, okay? So there's gonna be a pocket chart sentence, which I actually introduced the previous day. Let's see if I can show you. So the program has these little cards for you. So you just print them out. Ideally, you put it in a pocket chart, but if not, you know, that's fine. Display it somehow. And um, then I also have like a little picture because this can help make it concrete for English language learners. They're on individual cards to help develop concept of word. Because yeah, we're working on high frequency words, but we're also working on print concepts in general. You can also, I shouldn't have messed that up, but you can also mix them up and give them in a baggie and the kids reassemble the sentences, okay? So the sentences are really only gonna have words that are high frequency words that they've been learning um, or like, you know, a CBC word that is horribly crooked. Okay, so we're gonna reread the sentence. They should be able to read it because we already read it the previous day. We see a pot, okay? So they should hopefully remember that. Then what I'm gonna do is I am going to, where did I put that? Okay, here it is. I'm gonna hold up a flashcard. From Sounds of Spelling has flashcards in there, so you can just print them. I just 
wrote it on a card today. So this is the flashcard that they are going to see when we're practicing. And I'm going to say, hey, kindergartners, what's the difference between this word and this word? Is it the same? Is it different? And we're going to talk about how the W, whoops, how the W is lowercase and here it's capitalized, but it's still the same word. This is something that I emphasize over and over again because they might know this word and then they see it capitalized in print and they get confused. Not always, but sometimes. So I'm just constantly talking about how it's the same word. Um, and then after that, we are actually going to tap out the word. So I would have them stand up. Karen, great, great question. Let me answer that in a second. I'd have them stand up and I'd say, I'm, I'd be holding the card. It's kind of hard to do um, here with you, but I would just tell them, okay, we, the letters in we are W E. W E we. Now we're going to tap. So they would know this process. We tap on our arms. W E we. I don't use the arm for tapping sounds because that can get confusing. You can if you want to, but we chop sounds. When they get older, they can tap. Um, but I keep it just letter names on the arm because otherwise it gets confusing if sometimes we're doing sounds and sometimes we're spelling the letters. So we're only tapping on the arm anyway for high frequency words and we're spelling it. So they tap W E we. Okay, now I'm gonna say, okay, now we're gonna write the word. They've also seen this word the previous day, keep in mind. So at this point, they are going to take some kind of material that's gonna create bumpy letters. Um, if you've ever seen scrapbook paper that has glitter on it, this is another good option. This is called knitting screen. You've probably heard me talk about it before. You can get it on Amazon. Mine came in a larger sheet and I cut it into strips of four. Each one of the kiddos is gonna have this. They're gonna have a folder. If you use from Sounds of Spelling, I highly, highly recommend keeping a folder. And then the kids can just keep this, keep their high frequency words, whatever. And so then we are going to write the word we. And so for the kinders, I kind of like to just do it all together. We're saying the letters out loud, W, E, we. And we're gonna do it again. We're gonna go over it so it makes it bumpier. W, E, we. So your end product, so writing is good, right? Just writing, practicing, writing the uh, word. But then if they keep this in their folder, then it's bumpy and they can trace and say W E we. So it's multi-sensory, engaging and especially helpful for your kiddos who may have special needs. Okay, Linda says they do catch on fast, did it from the start this year. So Linda is affirming that if you start blending early on in the school year, kindergarten teachers, your kiddos will catch on fast. It is amazing, a beautiful thing. Natasha, love that idea. If you're just joining me, by the way, make sure to get your comment in. Tell me what grade you teach. Tell me if you have a phonics program or not. Um, just say hi, whatever you want to do in the comments, because at the end, I'm going to pull my winner. My winner is going to get to choose alphabet bean bags or little phonics building domino things. Okay, super. The bumpy sheets, this is called the one that I have, knitting screen. I don't know anything about knitting, but apparently you use some kind of screen and I bought it on Amazon. <laughs> I did not invent this idea. Okay. Hey, Adriana. Is it Adriana? And Marie. Amazing. Okay. Um, who was it? It was Karen. Karen had a really good question. So Karen's asking, do I do this whole group or small group? This particular lesson, if you're just joining me, we're going to be doing a first grade lesson and I'm going to be doing a second grade lesson. But this lesson that I'm doing right now is kindergarten and I'm typically doing it whole group. Could I do it small group? Yes. In the lesson plans, there are notes. In kinder, I don't recommend it until we've gone through the whole alphabet. But and even first and second, we do whole group at first at the beginning of the year. But then when it's time, when I recommend going into your small group instruction, I note on the lesson plans what things might be done whole group and what things might be done small group. And you can make changes to that, but it's just a suggestion. Kinder, I highly recommend going through the alphabet or most of the alphabet whole group. There are opportunities even for your higher kiddos to be stretched, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So I highly recommend going through the whole alphabet and whole group setting. Christina's used the screen before. Yep, great for OG or Gilligan. Yes, um, I think it's, is it Neat Siza? Sorry if I'm saying your name incorrectly. This should be recorded, fingers crossed. I know you missed the beginning, but it should go to the Learning of the Primary Bond Facebook page. No big deal. 
Heather says, what do you have them put in the folder? Okay, so it depends on the grade. I mentioned keeping a folder for talking about my phonics program from Sounds of Spelling. The kids are going to have like these things. Um, they are going to have some decodable text. In kindergarten, you're not going to see them quite yet. They might have their little letter books, their alphabet books that are included in the program. Um, but like your older kids are going to have their decodable text in kinder once they get there. I'm um, trying to think of what else they keep in there. Decodable tags, let's see if there's anything else. If there are games that are like differentiated, if they're doing a sort, if they have specific independent work that they're going to like take to a center and do, they keep them in there. I feel like there's other stuff that I have them keep in there and I will tell you when it comes to me. <laughs> hey Aisha, so glad you are here. Amazing, Linda uses Hegarty and then phonics is from Sounds to Spell. Super, super awesome, Lisa. Okay, so we are, we're like halfway into the kindergarten lesson. We've done warm ups. We've worked on a high frequency word. I could work on another high frequency word with them. It would be something from the sentence like A, because we have like these pocket chart sentences for the week and so the high frequency words are coming from there. So I could do another high frequency word if I have time, if I want to. But now what we're gonna move into is we're going to move into our letter C instruction. And something that I like to do is you'll probably have a class alphabet chart posted somewhere. Um, what I will do is I'll say, okay, let's say either say or sing the alphabet and I'll point to each letter. I have this like tall pointer, so I'm like pointing up. And when we get to the letter C, then I want you to raise your hands and stop me because I want them to make that connection between like the alphabet song, the alphabet chart. I don't necessarily do this for every letter, but at the very beginning, I, I do for sure. So I'll just say, okay, today we're gonna practice the letter C, say C, C. C is the third letter in the alphabet. And then we're gonna like sing or whatever and point. And then I'll say, this is the capital C, again, pointing to my chart. And this is the lowercase C. And I'll ha also have them say capital C, lowercase C. Next up, we have this little rhyme. This is just, these are just silly little rhyme poem things that have a lot of alliteration in them. And From Sounds of Spelling has one for every single letter. So um, I'm just gonna show them the page. And before I read it to them, I'm just gonna say this little rhyme is a lot of words that begin with the letter C. Do you see any of those words? So they're gonna hopefully you know, point some things out. You want to have this big, so display it on your screen, put it under the document camera. If you desire, you can also just write it on chart paper, but personally, I think it's easier to just print it and have it big because there's little pictures on them as well. So this is our little rhyme. They're going to show me some words that begin with C, and then I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to read you the rhyme. Uh, I want you to listen for the sound that C makes. Ready? So I haven't talked about the sound yet. I've just talked about the name. So then I'm going to, I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm going to read them the rhyme, kind of like emphasizing the sound in it, right? Then I'll say, um, can you, know, could you figure out from the rhyme, what is the sound for the letter C? And hopefully they would say, K. and then I would say this letter's name is C and the sound is K. Say K with me. I say K, right? I'm always talking about this is a letter. Every letter has a name, just like we have names and every letter has a sound. So I'm using that language a lot. Um, and then I will say something like, okay, I want you to say C says K, and I'll say C says K. We might do some air tracing too. We to use our whole arm for engaging those larger muscles, which promotes memory. C says K, it's probably backwards for you, sorry. Okay, and then I'll say, okay, I'll just, I'll pick a word from here or come up with another word or I'll point to the, like the alphabet poster and I might say, okay, cat starts with what other words start with k? So you wanna see what they can come up with. Um, you can do, you can make a chart, like you could take anchor chart paper or just do it on the board and have them just come up with words that start with that sound, see what they can come up with. Now, if a student comes up with something that either starts with the letter K, cause it's the same phoneme, right? Or they just come up with, they just say like dog or something totally not starting with the letter C. Um, you can just write it off to the side and show them, wow, you know what? This is this is a great word. It doesn't begin with the letter C. What letter does it begin with? So you just can kind of like take their answer, but then show them it does not begin with the letter C. So you can make a chart if you want, which can be fun because then you can revisit them, but they're just coming up with the any words that they can think of that begin with C. 
Next up, I show them this really short letter C video clip. From Sounds of Spelling has this in there. There's the letter name, the letter sound, and there is a movement. So like for the letter H, H hat, you're like putting on a hat on your head. So there's like that little chant for them. Um, and then at the end, I didn't used to do this, but I've learned how valuable this is. I will just ask them, is the letter C a consonant? or is it a vowel? And they will say consonant. We have talked about this earlier. They know what the vowels are. They're in like, they're noted differently on the alphabet chart in from sounds to spelling. So they will know by this point in the year, even though it's only week seven, they should be able to say consonant. Okay, awesome. Aisha, is this program suitable for preschoolers? I would say unit one of kindergarten, Aisha, yes. Unit one is all about the alphabet. You might not need the later units that kindergarten cover, but absolutely yes for um, unit one. And you can modify as needed. Awesome. Oh, Aisha, you have some really, okay, actually the whole level K might be appropriate if they already know the letters and sounds. Super advanced, amazing. If you're just joining me, make sure you're getting your comments in. Um, let me ask a question so you have something to answer. Let's see. Ooh, here's a question. When you were learning the alphabet as a student, do you remember there being more emphasis on the letter names or the letter sounds? Go ahead and let me know in the chat there. Okay, so we have gone through the lesson introduction, the high frequency word, introducing letter C, and then at this point we might have like a movement break, brain break, whatever. And now we're gonna do the letter C picture sort. Oh, I, I forgot to bring the pictures. Okay, well, <laughs> you can at least see the mat. I forgot to bring the pictures that go with it, but there's like another half sheet and there's some pictures that start with C. I don't know how well you can see this and some pictures that do not start with the letter C. So their job, it's a little bit of independent work now. I will model it. Their job is to cut out the pictures and glue them depending on if they start with the K sound or they don't start with the K sound. Now I would never include pictures that begin with the letter K. I'm not testing them if they know C or K. I'm just testing them really, do they know this phoneme and getting them to connect can be represented by the letter C. So they're gonna do that picture sort again, 30 pictures, can't see them here. <laughs> if I had the pictures with me, like let's, let's just pretend that this is one. So they will be gluing them down. Now for some of your kids, this activity is great. They glue the pictures, that's enough of a practice thing for them. For some of your kids are going to need to be advanced a little bit. And for that advancing, what you can do is have them use invented spelling to write the word under the picture. This is very large. The pictures in the actual program are not this large. This is from something else. Um, but they can stretch out the word, listen for the sounds that they hear. Another thing for advanced students is they can add more pictures. They can draw more pictures that begin with C or they could even try to write words that begin with C. So there are ways to advance this activity for sure. And that's it, that's the kindergarten lesson. Now, does it look exactly like this every single day? No, there is a, uh, like a routine that we get into. This is just one day from week seven, again, of level K of from sounds to spelling, okay? So there's other activities like an alphabet book, games, writing on whiteboard. There's other things and there's a routine, but this is just one kind of day pulled out of week seven. So the last thing I wanna show you about kindergarten and then we're gonna move on to first grade. I have a lot of things here. Um, are just an example of the no prep phonics games. So from sounds to spelling, the phonics program that I've been you know teaching from here has plenty of games and activities. However, recently we released in the Learning at the Primary Pond TPT store some no prep phonics games that can be used maybe if you have your own phonics program that you're doing that you have to use, or if you use from sounds to spelling and you just want some additional no prep games, you can use them that way. If you're new to from sounds to spelling though, I would just start with the program because I gave you plenty of materials, more than you would probably need. Okay, so letter C, it's just like a home run hitter game. All they're doing is it's a solo game and they are moving around the board and they're supposed to name each picture out loud. And when they get to a picture that starts with the K sound, which is the letter C, then they can cover, it's, it's like a home run baseball game. They can cover one of their baseballs and then when they cover every single baseball and the home plate, 
then that means that they win. So it's one player, which is great for social distancing, also great for kinders at the beginning of the year when partner work is maybe not up and running yet, maybe not thriving yet. So again, this is from the No Prep Phonics games. Laura says, love No Prep material from you, amazing. Yes, so this is just a possible follow-up that the kiddos could play after the lesson or sometime later in the week. Let's see, hopefully I'm not missing too many questions. Lorian says, yes, they love the swords. Awesome. Okay, so that was kinder. If you're a kinder teacher, I would encourage you not to go away because I'm gonna do the first grade lesson now. Well, number one, don't go away because of the giveaway. But number two, don't go away because the first grade lesson is going to be helpful to you. You can just kind of file this away for later in the year. So let's move on to grade one. Again, this is gonna be a first grade lesson from my phonics program, from Sounds to Spelling. I am doing lesson two in week five. So this will be the second day of the week in week five. Again, just kind of trying to pull different things to give you a sense of, you know, what different parts of the program are like. All right, so just like kinder, we're gonna start with some quick phonological awareness. Let's play a game. I'm gonna say a word and you repeat it and then you take away part of the word. The word is eggplant. Repeat, they say eggplant. Eggplant, take away, egg makes, Hopefully they get plant, or I tell them. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. The word is shoelace. Say shoelace. Shoelace, take away shoe, makes lace. So they're working with compound words, taking parts out. The phonological awareness is really intentional in the program. It's not just random. We're building things. We're um, just like expanding on skills. So it's very much intentional throughout the program. So after that, and that again is just gonna take a minute, I'm gonna say, let's play a game. I'm gonna say a word and you segment it. So segment would just be like, break it up into the phonemes. And some of your firsties may not be able to tap yet, and that's okay. Tapping is useful because when kids are writing, like for example, if they wanna spell the word chat, they can tap with their hand, chat, to help make sure that they have all the sounds. So I have them do it with their non-dominant hand. It might be backwards for you, and you want them doing it left to right because print works left to right. So we can tap. Honestly, at the beginning of first grade, though, I just chop. So I'm going to say, okay, the word is chat. Say chat. They have to say chat, the whole word. Okay, tell me the sounds in chat. And they're going to say ch -a -t, chat. Okay? Okay, the next word is ship. Say ship. They say ship. Tell me the sounds in ship. Ch Ship. ship. These words are words that we're working with this week. So you probably heard chat. We are going to be working on the CH digraph in this lesson with them. So that's why I chose words with CH. There's some SH words as well. I believe that's also reviewed in this part of the week. So the words have to do with the things that they're reading and writing. Not always, but as much as possible because the better they are with working with the sounds, the easier it is for them to blend and write spell words, right? Okay, Linda yes, says partner work, not ideal this time of the year for sure with kinders, yep. And <laughs> until they learn, not all are the boss. Yes, love those kinders, but yes. Linda says question, how do you get kids to not repeat take away? Oh yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, so yeah, my kids repeat weird things too sometimes. So I'm trying to think. So like, for example, if we were saying shoelace, take away shoe makes, I would have to model it, right? Like sometimes I'll actually have a student come up and do the part that exactly that what I want them to. And then they see, oh, I'm only supposed to say this. Another thing you can do, Linda, is if kids are repeating words that you're, they're not supposed to, when they're list, like when you want them to listen to certain things, put a finger over your lips to show them like they're not supposed to be like saying anything. Um, that helps, but you're not alone. Sometimes they get confused. Don't know if that helps, but hopefully it does. Okay, so we have our two quick phonological awareness drills for sure. And then afterward, we are going to do some high frequency word review. I'm just gonna have some flashcards and we're gonna go through things that I've already taught. Now, this is quick. Right, we're not spending forever on this. This little next piece that I'm doing, the review and blending drill is only like three or four minutes. And by the way, in the program, it actually tells you, okay, like spend this many minutes on it, whatever. So next up, we're gonna go through the blending drill. And you saw me do the blending drill if you were around, I wonder where my phone is stuck, I have too many things. 
you saw me do the blending drill already if you saw the kindergarten lesson. Now with the blending drill, again, I'm only gonna have the sounds that I have reviewed or taught thus far, okay? So I have the same thing that I have from kinder, but I would only be working with the sounds that I've taught my firsties. Now, what I don't have, I lost my CH card. I don't know where it is, I have to print it again. Um, what I don't have is the CH. We are doing day two of this particular week of the program, and on day one, I actually already introduced the CH digraph, which should hopefully be reviewed for first grade. So I would have here the CH digraph, and we would read chop, chop. They are not allowed to shout the word out because this is a blending drill. This is not a blurting drill or a reading drill, right? This is a blending drill. They must say the sounds, blend to read. This is also where having nonsense words can like come in handy because then they're not able to just shout out the word usually. Usually requires a little more blending and thinking on their part. So we're gonna do the blending drill. We're gonna include CH because I introduced that yesterday. Imagine that, okay? So blending drill is quick. We're gonna go through maybe four to eight words. And with first grade, hopefully by now, I would just be pointing, they would be saying the sounds and blending. It would be um, quicker than with kinder, or what you saw me do with kinder. Okay, so now we are going to do some high frequency word review. In week five of level one of the program, meaning first grade, we are reviewing the words that were taught in level K of the program. So at the beginning of the year, we're kind of like doing more words than usual per week because we are reviewing. Now, if your kids didn't have level K of the program, I talk in the lessons about what to do about that. And so if that's the case and the words just don't match, no big deal. I tell you what to do. I tell you how to handle it. But honestly, the level K words are pretty basic. So it's not going to be anything crazy that they likely wouldn't have learned before. If you're just joining me, don't forget to get your comment in so that you are entered into the giveaway, which I will be doing after I finish the first grade and then second grade lesson. We're about halfway through the first grade lesson. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for high frequency words is I am going to have a word card and this is not even the correct word from the lesson. I just grabbed one from my little box there. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to usually write a, a sentence on the board that has the target word. I'll read them the sentence, I'll point to the target word, like show them the flashcard, this is the word me, okay? And then I'll have them come up with, by talking to a partner, come up with a sentence of their own that has the target word. So we're trying to get them to think about the meaning of the word. When have they heard this word before? Can they come up with a sentence? We're not writing anything yet, we're just working on this orally. Oral language and vocabulary, so, so important. I feel like it's the forgotten stepchild or something of literacy, but so important. So we begin with meaning of the word, right? And then I'm gonna say, okay, let's say the sounds in the word me. What do you hear? M, mm E. Okay, now we wanna connect the sounds to the letters. M, mm, oops, M, mm, E. What do you notice about the letter E? Oh, it makes a long E sound or hopefully they'll you know, at least be able to say that it says E, right? So we wanna make sure we talk about the vowel. Now, let's say you've only taught short vowels and the kids don't know long vowels, that is okay. It is okay to point out sounds and spelling patterns that they have not learned yet. You just tell them, hey, guess what? You know that E can say eh, guess what? It can also say E, isn't that crazy? These silly vowels, whatever. So um, you are connecting the sounds to the letters for them or getting them to do it if they're able, even if the sounds are surprising or tricky. I like to say surprising, okay? So we talked about the meaning of the word. We use it in sentences, this. You can also then have them tap out, like I showed for kindergarten, M-E, me, okay? So we're working with the meaning of the word, the letters in the word. And in the brain, when kids learn words, whether we know it or not, a process called orthographic mapping is happen happening. And it involves different things. It does involve the meaning of the word, but primarily what's going on is the name of the letter or like what the letter looks like, and then also the sound. And so when we're orthographically, orthographically mapping, I'm not sure that, that that's the correct way to say it, but with orthographically mapping words, kids are learning to connect the sounds that they hear, right, to the letters. So even though they might recognize me very quickly, 
It just means that their brains have gotten so fast at, you know, like mapping this word that it's now easy for them. And that's what we're going for with these high frequency words. High frequency words appear frequently in text and we are trying to get them to become sight words for kids, meaning they can basically just read them instantly. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's see who we got here. You are so welcome, Nicole. Gina says, do you prefer having the physical word cards using a PowerPoint? I do like the physical word cards. Um, Nicole, uh, who am I talking to? Gina, sorry. <laughs> um, I do like having the physical cards. I don't have the whole, it's over there. I don't have the whole like, it's like a photo, rainbow photo storage thing. I just got it from Amazon and I have them labeled my little labeler, my best friend got me one Christmas and I go crazy with it. The rainbow photo storage thing, I just, I have each week or like pairs of weeks, I keep the cards in there. And for me that works, that's pretty easy for me. Amazing, Asha says we're in week five of From Sounds to Spelling in second grade, loving it, super Ashley. And we're gonna be doing week nine in a minute, I'm gonna do, um, a lesson from week nine to level two, so you will get to see what's coming up. Awesome, awesome. Okay, where was it? We did the sight word, that's what we did, <laughs> or we did the high frequency word, and we talked about orthographic mapping, we talked about connecting the sounds to the letters. I do that in kindergarten too. You didn't see me do that, I don't think, in this one, but that is an important element of it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna review the CH digraph. We have learned this yesterday, imagine, okay? So I'm just gonna say something like, yesterday we learned about this digraph, CH. What sound can CH make? Ch, right? Let's read some words with ch in them. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have these flashcards. And these you could potentially not print out. These you could do on a PowerPoint. Um, the high frequency word cards I do like to have printed out and put in here, but you could potentially do these on a PowerPoint for sure. Cause it is a lot, it, you know, it can be a lot to print. So now we're gonna read some cards. And again, we're not just learning out words, we're actually blending ch um, chum. Maybe later in the week they can read them fluently and that's great, such, such. We are applying that knowledge of the CH digraph to words, right, application. By the way, meant to mention this, if you have from Sounds to Spelling, we, we've always had these sound posters in them, but I also recently added, just as a, like a bonus surprise gift for you, if you wanna do a more traditional sound wall where they're the like sounds and pictures and whatever are smaller and you have like vowel mouth position stuff, I put that in from Sounds to Spelling for you. I don't have it anywhere else, but the sound wall printables are just a bonus inside the program in case you wanna do something a little smaller than these. These are half pages, there's a whole page too, totally up to you, just a little bonus in there. Okay, so we're reading words, right? We go through some different ones. Um, let's see, now what we're gonna do is we are going to do a dictation. So I can find my whiteboard. So a dictation would just be when you are having the kids spell specific words, potentially a sentence or two as well, and the words that you choose are gonna have only the patterns that you've taught. So if you have not taught long vowels, you're not gonna be dictating any long vowel words unless it happens to be like, you know, you're doing a high frequency word like me, okay? But the words that we are gonna do today in our little dictation, I'm gonna dictate just one at a time. I wouldn't give them all at once. I'm just gonna tell them to you, chin, such, chop, chat, okay? When you're doing this, if you use the program, keep an eye on your time, because like I said, I did suggest like do this many minutes with it. Keep an eye on your time, and if you don't get to all the words, that's okay. Or if you have a little extra time, either move on or come up with another word. But the words are there for you, right? Okay, so first we're gonna write the word chin. Say chin, they say chin. You always want them saying those words, get them in their mouth. This is my chin. So I'm gonna use some kind of you know sentence with it so they get what it means. Let's segment it together. Ch -i -n. Now write it. So now, if my kids needed more support, I would say, okay, what's the first sound? Ch. Okay, now write ch. Okay, now let's segment again. Ch, e, n. What's the next sound? I. And they write it. Especially with kinder, when they're first learning to write like vowel consonant or CVC words, it's okay to go sound by sound. Okay, now let's segment again. And they're doing it with me. Ch, e, n. What's the next sound? N. So they write it. So you don't have to do it like this. 
The least amount of support would just be you say chin, use it in a sentence, and they write it. But in first grade, week five, we're not there yet. We need to segment it together, and then I'll usually try to see if they can write it on their own. Okay? So they are writing on their own individual whiteboards, and this could be done small group. In week five, I don't usually recommend going to small group yet, but I kind of like ease you into it if you want to at, at a certain week. I don't remember which week it is in the first grade program. Um, but so once they've written it, okay, then I will, so you can do it two ways. Number one, you can write the word on the board, have them check it and fix it, or you can do what I'm going to do now and have and see if they can fix the word themselves. OK, so if I want to see if they can fix the word themselves, I'll say now let's touch under each letter and say the sound to make sure we made the word correctly. When we say Ch, remember to touch both the C and the H because it's a digraph. They're best friends is what I call them. Ready? Let's say the sounds. Ch, in, n, chin. Many times if I do this, they will recognize mistakes because we're saying the sounds. I'll say, oh, like if they do, if they wrote like the A, they'll be like, oh, that's wrong and they can fix it. Even if you've already shown them the word, still have them tap it back. I call it tap it back, chin, chin, because again, you're reinforcing sounds to letters. You're building those connections in the brain. That's how kids learn to read. Okay. So we wrote chin. Now, with a, like maybe like the first or second word, I might say to them, okay, what is the vowel in this word? Show me the vowel. Okay, what is the vowel sound? I. Then I might say, what's the last sound in this word? Mm. What's the digraph in this word? I want them to learn those terms. What's a digraph? C-H. Okay, so I don't go into a lot of in-depth questioning for every word, but I always do have them tap it back. So sounds and letters. So again, we're gonna do three more words and that's the end of our dictation. Later in the week, we will do it on paper, kind of like an assessment um, on day five or Friday of the program. And then we'll usually do like a sentence there and the sentence will have words, like high frequency words that we've been working on too, as well as words with those sounds. Okay, uh, this is the last part, last little part of the first grade lesson. Then we'll move on to second grade. Here, we are going to read a decodable text. This is great to do in small group, but you can also do it whole group, and I'll show you how to differentiate. So I'm going to read them the title. Okay, the story is called Chop the Log, Chad. Funny story. Um, my friend Brenda wrote this. Every time now I see somebody like chopping a log, I'm like, chop the log, Chad. So I've got two copies of the book, right? Every kiddo is going to have their own copy. I'll say the story is called Chop the Log, Chad. And then I'll say, what do you think this story will be about? So they're going to share their predictions. Then I'm just going to introduce the text and I'm going to tailor my introduction to exactly what they need. So if there are certain words in here, this is why it's always important to preview the text. If there's certain words in here that they're not going to know for whatever reason, maybe the it like doesn't match, your high frequency words don't match the program, um, no big deal, you just pre-teach. You write on a board, say this word is this, let's find it in the text, and then you move on. If there are certain words that I feel like the kids might need, the, the books are generally limited to the high frequency words in the program, and the sounds that you've taught. But if there are certain words, you know, just like maybe one or two in some of the text, I will direct you to pre-teach the word. So I may, you know, you might pre-teach a word depending on the kid's needs. Another thing you can do, and this is especially helpful for digraphs, with some of my kids, they might see this and they might start saying k instead of ch. So if you're just introducing or working on digraphs or other chunks of letters, it's not just digraphs, any chunk of letters, you can have them circle or highlight those chunks before they read the book. So before they actually read, go through, have them circle or highlight. The program has a passage, a one page passage version of the text as well. So if that works better for your kids and it leads them to less guessing from the pictures, great. Um, and the nice thing is they're printable so they can keep them, they can write on them, whatever. So if you want to have them do CH, circle, CH, um, go for it. And then if you feel like the kids are going to get overwhelmed by the amount of text, which is not a ton of text, but you know, firsties, 
you can have them preview and say, oh, are there any words that you already know? Okay, so at this point then, you can let them read the text if you feel like they're at the level that they can. Your other option is to maybe read them like the first two pages or choral read and then have them finish. You ideally want them blending to read all of the words on their own, but in kindergarten, you know, once they get to that point of being able to read decodable text in first grade, sometimes it can seem overwhelming. So you choose the amount of support that is appropriate to your kiddos, okay? In the actual program from Sounds of Spelling, I tell you, hey, these are some things that you can do to support them if they need it. Aisha, it is at from soundstospelling.com. Hopefully I did not miss you, but it's from soundstospelling.com. Flavia says, do the decodables have a high frequency word list so we know which ones are in the text? Um, they, these particular ones do not, Flavia, because they correspond closely to the program. So I do have other decodable texts on Teachers Pay Teachers, and those do have a list, but here, no, because it's really like tied into the program. Okay, so I also mentioned differentiation and support. Now, if you have to teach phonics whole group for whatever reason, you know, you can introduce the text just like I was talking about and have them read. However, what most of the decodable texts in the program have is two different levels. So I know it sounds kind of weird, level decodable text, but let me show you. So there's like the regular version of the text, okay? And then this says E, not guided reading level E, but just E for easier. Oh no, sorry, these are marked wrong. So this is actually, yeah, we need to fix that. Um, this is actually the harder version of the text. So just to compare, this says see the long, and then the more challenging one says, see the big log. More challenging one says, Chad had a job to chop the log. And then the easier one says, Chad had to chop it. So there's still, in both cases, the kids are getting to practice the CH digraph and other sounds that they've learned and high frequency words. However, and again, these are wrong, we need to fix that. Um, in this version of the text, which is actually the, this is the harder one. Yeah, this is the, you know, this was, this is the harder one. This version of the text, it has more words, right? There's more for the kids to read. So whether all of your kids are reading the easier version or, you know, whether some are reading this and that, you definitely have options. Decodable texts don't all have to be like at the same difficulty level, okay? Let me know in the chat if you use decodable text. If you're just joining me, I'm gonna pull from the comments and my winners, I'm gonna mail you either alphabet bean bags or these fun little word building tiles. Let me know in the chat if you use decodable text. Okay, so that is the end of the first grade lesson. So we reviewed CH, right? We did some high frequency word work. That's just part of the high frequency word work that you know we're doing throughout the week. Um, what else did we do? We read some words with CH, we did a dictation on the whiteboards, and then we read Chop the Log Chen, our decodable text, okay? So that was first grade. See lots of yeses. Amazing, amazing. So these are from, from Sounds of Spelling. I didn't put the link, but I do have some in my Learning at the Primary Pond Teachers Pay Teacher store that are different if you want those. Okay, so. I guess, oh yeah, before we move on to second grade, that'll be our last lesson, and then I'll be pulling my giveaway winner. I wanna show you an example of the no prep phonics games that can be used with this skill. So in case you missed it, I'm teaching from the From Sounds to Spelling phonics program, from soundsofspelling.com, $30 off right now, yay. Um, but I also have these brand new no prep phonics games in the Learning at the Primary Pond Teachers Pay Teachers store. And so maybe you have a different phonics program that you have to use, or maybe you just are obsessed with no prep games because yay for no prep, and you want to add these two from Sounds to Spelling. Um, these are all, they can be played, the vast majority can be played with a one person as a one player game if you need that for uh, social distancing. They're not worksheets, they're fun, right? They're engaging, but you don't have to do any prep work. 
So here's an example of a game that you could play along with this week five of, first, of the first grade program. So this is called Fishing for CH and SH Words. I believe later in the week, in week five, we review SH. Again, this would ideally be something that they've been taught in kindergarten already. So it is review, but a lot of them will still need practice. So once they know both of them, they can play this. It's actually a one player game, even though it looks like a board game. And they are just rolling a die, moving a little game piece. And meanwhile, they have this recording sheet. And so whenever they land on a word, they have to read it. And they also have to write it either in the CH word column or the SH word column. And the, whichever column has more words at the end is the winner. So CH can win or SH can win. So you could have this just be a printable, print out in black and white. You could also put it in a little page protector. I love these because you can wipe them off, you can clean them, whatever, and then you can reuse them. So this again is from the no prep phonics games, just an option for you. Okay, let us move on to level two. Yay, and then I'll be pulling my giveaway winner. All right, so second grade lesson. Amazing. Ashley says, love the decodables. We use the first passage together and then they do the second passage independently. The comprehension questions are perfect. Super. Okay. So now let's move on to second grade. Um, I'm going to do a slightly different lesson for second grade. Now what you saw with the first grade version is very similar to what many of the second grade lessons are. Of course, they're more challenging, right? We're actually, I, I don't have this in these lessons, but maybe I'll do it another time. We are also learning how to break up and decode multisyllabic words. So that's, you know, one way that the material gets more challenging. But what you saw in first grade, if you're a second grade teacher using from sounds to spelling, there is definitely some similarity. So I'm going to show you kind of a different lesson. In second grade, in the second grade program, yes, of course, we, you know, we cover vowel teams and diphthongs and archangel vowels and all that good stuff. But we also cover briefly contractions. And we also, I think, cover possessives in another um, week, I believe. So with contractions, what you're going to see is week nine, day one. And on that day, I am basically reviewing contractions with the kids. They probably have seen them. They've probably talked about them in first grade. But we're just going to go over it and make sure that they know, you know, what they are, how to read them. And then a lot of kids still won't be able to form them correctly. So we're going to start working on forming them. And also something to note, I'll, I'll like show this later too, but this poster, here you go, is um, it shows only a limited number of types of contractions. I just, I don't throw contractions in general at them right away. I choose certain like combining words like is, am, are, whatever, not the easier ones. And then we build from there. The first grade version of the program does go over contractions briefly as well. So this ideally would be a review. Okay, so before we actually do that, we're gonna do the phonological awareness component. With the second grade from Sounds to Spelling program, for the first half of the year, there is still phonological awareness work. It's more advanced, and I'm gonna show you what that might look like, but there is still phonological awareness work. Now, after the first half of the program, it's not like we're tossing phonological awareness to the side. Some of your kids even may need more of it in small group, but you know, later on in the year when we're, I don't know, we might be working with vowel teams or whatever else, we're still tapping out words. We're still talking about sounds. It's just that that more, you know, kindergarten, first grade style, phonological awareness, little listening games, we do that for the first half of the year. And then we discontinue and work on phonological awareness in other ways <clears throat> in level two. In kindergarten and first grade, of course, we do phonological awareness throughout the whole year. Let me take a drink of water. <laughs> Okay, so our first little activity that we're going to do is I'm going to say to them, let's, let's practice breaking up words into their syllables and sounds. Our first word is robot. Say robot. robot. Let's pound the syllables. This is something that I would have taught before. Robot. First syllable, they tell me ro. Say the sounds. R -o, ro. Second syllable, bot. Say the sounds. M -ot, bot. Bot. So it's kind of a lot going on, but basically they are pounding the syllables, then they're telling me each syllable, and they're telling me the sounds in that syllable. Okay, so then we repeat with a few more words. The next one is token. Say token. Token. 
What are the syllables in token? To ken. First syllable, cho. This is what they're telling me. Tell me the sounds. T o cho. So they're pounding for the syllables and they're tapping for the sounds. So the reason why we're doing this, and it does take the kids a little bit to get it, the reason why we're doing this is because second graders need to learn how to spell multisyllabic words. We're just doing two syllable words here. And this helps them begin to think, instead of just saying all the sounds in a word, because two syllable words, three syllable words, those are longer, it helps them begin to break down each word into the syllables and then think about the sounds within those syllables. Let me know in the chat if you teach kids that are trying to write multisyllabic words and they tend to just like leave sounds out. That is very common if they do. That's why we work on pounding the syllables and breaking each syllable down into the sound. Oh, bummer. Bobby says our previous adoption had a class set of decodables. New curriculum does not include any. Darn, that is a bummer for sure. They're so, so helpful. Okay, so we, we do a couple of those words for syllables and sounds. Again, remember, tell me if your kiddos are leaving out sounds in the words that they're trying to spell when they're longer words, multisyllabic words. This helps. So now I'm gonna say, okay, now we're gonna play a game where we switch out the last sound in the word to make a new word. The word is arm, repeat, arm. Arm, change m to t, and we get art. Okay, then I do it again. Next word is cork, say cork. Cork, cork change k to d, and we get cord. So this is more, this is, um, phoneme manipulation, which is obviously more advanced than like just chopping words. And, you know, it takes a little bit for them to get it. But this is what phonological awareness practice can look like at the second grade level. Some of your first graders and kindergartners can do this too, definitely first grade. But this is what it looks like at the beginning of the year. So we do that. Again, this is very quick. And then I'm going to display the contractions poster. And I'm going to say, okay, today we're going to talk about contractions. Say contraction, contraction. You may have seen contractions in books. Here are some examples. I'm going to show them this. My document camera doesn't work too well for this, but I'm going to say, okay, can't, I'm, could've, won't. So I'm just reading the examples. So then I'm going to tell them contractions are special because they combine two words. For example, the contraction can't combines the words can and not. I'm combines the words I and am. And what I like to do on the board is I will, if you've ever seen this, it's like almost like a number bond thing. So I don't know if you do this, but so if this is the contraction. I'll show it like this. So if the kids have ever done number bonds, hopefully you can see that okay. Let me see if I can make that easier to see. There you go. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better there. So I'll just write the contraction like a number bond, but basically we are going over some examples. And then at that point, what I'm going to tell them is, you know, there are different words that can be used to form contractions. So I will cover up, I guess you guys can't even see it, but not and will, because for this first day, we are only doing contractions with is, am, are. Okay. And I will say, so when we make a contraction with the word is, we add the apostrophe, this little punctuation mark, and the letter S. So for example, we can take she is and make she's. The apostrophe is taking the place of one letter. Can you tell what letter it's taking the place of? And they should hopefully figure out that it's the I. So then we just repeat it with am and are. And these are the only three types of contractions that we're working on. I'm just getting them to tell me like which part of the word or which letter is missing. So just getting them to notice things about the contraction, talking about the word apostrophe as well. So after we've gone over these three, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them each a half sheet of words with contractions. Now, if you prefer to just display that on the board, no big deal. You can do that too. Sometimes I display it. Sometimes I want them to have their own half sheets. Okay, coming back to my, <laughs> I don't think I talked about this with the folder. So many moons ago, like almost an hour ago, someone asked me what I put in their folders. And when they have word half sheets like this, 
for word reading practice, if I give them a physical copy, they keep those in their folders too. That's another thing I keep in there. So you can have them, you know, just read whole group. You can have them partner up and read either on the board or on a half sheet. It can be kind of easier for tracking if they can physically touch it so they don't lose, you know, they don't lose their place if you're not pointing. But they're going to read these words, right? And these contractions, these are only contractions with is, am, and are. So it's a limited list. Okay. So if I feel like I need, they need help, I may do like read it with them first and then they go and do it. But if I feel like they can do it on their own, then I might just give them the half sheet, they read, and then we move on. So this goes pretty quickly, three, four minutes. So then I'm going to tell them, now you're going to get to do something special. You are going to get to do contraction construction. What do construction workers do? They build things. If you've got like a hard hat or any fun props, bring it because we're going to do contraction construction. So I'm going to say you're, you're all like, they'll each, they're each going to get a piece of construction paper. And then they're each going to get one of these sheets. And what I'm going to tell them is your first job is to use your pretend saw, your scissors, to cut apart all these words and apostrophes. But they have to save this top part because there's like directions here. Okay. So they each get one of these sheets. They cut out all these little words. They have to save them. You can give them a baggie. So once everybody has cut, then I'm going to bring everybody back together and say, okay, now let's work down our list. What does the first contraction say? So they're going to read all of these words. I'm going to say, so I'm, for example, I'm your teacher. What two words are we going to use to make the contraction I? I am. So we need to find in our words here, I and am. Remember, they're, they're cut apart already. Okay, so imagine these are all cut apart into cards. Now, construction workers, how do we take I and am and turn that into I'm? So they're going to actually take this and physically cut off the A, right? And they're going to know that they need to add an apostrophe as well. So they're going to take their construction paper and they are, I don't know, hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. They're going to take, they're actually physically going to take these words, which again are cut apart already. And they're going to cut off the A, so they've got an I. They are going to, you can even have them like draw a little house if you wanted to, because it's again a construction theme. You are going to have them like physically cut off the A and then they're going to need to like draw with marker a little apostrophe and they're making I'm. So again, there are these target words that they're supposed to be making. You could like have them draw a house or a skyscraper and they're like filling it up with contractions, whatever seems fun. And so once you work with them to do the first one, usually they can go and do the rest of them by themselves or with a partner. And then of course you want them to read the con contractions after they do it. So that's all there is to this lesson. Pretty simple. This is just something fun and unique. Um, we don't do, you know, we don't necessarily have something like this for every skill, but it makes sense for contractions to have it be very hands-on like this. So I'm going to be pulling my giveaway winner super soon. So if you want to get in the comments so that you can be in there when I scroll and scroll, make sure to do so. Um, let me know in the chat if your phonics program teaches contractions. Because contractions is something that we cover in grammar as well. But I also feel like it's valuable for phonics because, it, you know, they're going to need to be reading and writing those words. So let me know in the chat if your phonics program covers contractions. And then the last little thing I want to show you is a possible game. This again comes from my no prep phonics games, which different from, from sounds to spelling. From sounds to spelling has plenty of materials that you can use. The no prep phonics games can of course be used with the program, but if you have a different phonics program, there's so many different skills. You can really fit this in with any phonics program. So this is a little activity. Again, it's one player. The vast majority of these, there's flexibility, but the vast majority of these can be played one player because of social distancing. There are options where they can do a partner game next year or whenever if you don't have to social distance. But in this game, you would have them play it after you've worked on contractions. And what you'll notice here going down is that there's 
like die faces and then the, like the type of contraction. So if they roll a one, it means that they are doing contractions with is, with apostrophe s, right? So he's, she's, it's, whose. They roll a die, they read a word, they cover a counter. They roll a die, they, you know, whatever they roll, they read it, they cover the word. And whichever like little contraction or number gets to the end first of these trophies, that one is the winner. And then they can, you know, take all their counters off and play again. So very simple, it, go it goes relatively quickly. So you might wanna have another game for them to play as well. But this stuff is really hands-on and it reinforces the concepts that you're teaching in the lesson. So the no prep phonics games are great for that. You know, I know we all wanna have engaging stuff for our students and not just do worksheet after worksheet. At the same time, our, our time is limited, right? Like we don't have forever to prep just one part of our literacy block or our day. So these are designed so you literally just print them and they're ready to use because I know you don't have a lot of time. None of us do. All right. So that was the kindergarten, the first grade, the second grade lesson. If you stuck with me for this whole time, you are amazing. And even if not, you are still amazing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scroll and pull my winner. So again, my winner is going to get to choose the alphabet uh, bean bags if you would like those. Or you can choose the like word building tiles that they're like colored dominoes. And I wish I had an example to show you, but you can have the kids put them together to make different words. It's like word chunks, playing with words. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so let me scroll. My winner, who I'm going to send a present to, is Karen, Karen Hart. You still with me? You are here for so much. Karen, let me know if you are here. And then Karen, I'm gonna need you to just email support at learning at the primary pond so we can get you your prize, yay. If you're not a winner, thanks for being here. I still do have some goodies for you. Um, so in from now until September 27th, my phonics program that I was teaching the lessons from, from Sounds to Spelling, that is $30 off, which is a bigger than normal discount that you can get. The code is FSTS30. Just go to fromsoundstospelling.com. You can always email too if you have questions or you need an information packet to send to your principal. There's even a, like a free week of each grade level on the website if you'd like to check that out. So that is on sale through Monday. And the No Prep Phonics games, those are brand new and they're also on sale through Monday. So these are actually 40% off if you get a kinder, first or second grade bundle. You get over 100 games, so much to choose from. But also not overwhelming because there's a table of contents and you can look and see, hey, I want this skill for this group, print it. This skill for this group, print it. Done. Super easy. So the kinder first and second bundles are 40% off through Monday. And then the K2 combined bundle is 50% off through Monday. You get so many games, so much to choose from. Because they're brand new, I wanted to do a big discount. All right, everybody. Yay, Karen, you stuck with me the whole time. Thanks for being here. Amazing. So if you have questions, feel free to leave them. Hopefully I did not, I'm concerned that I missed some questions, but you can feel free to retype if you do have questions that I did miss so that I can get to them. Um, Nancy, the K2 package, $30 off to, yes. From Sounds to Spelling, if you need K through second, that also the coupon code will work for that as well. Um, and the code is FSTS in capitals, 30, to get $30 off on the phonics program. Christine says our phonics program teaches phonics as an extension. Yeah, I feel like it's so important to have that core, core stuff going on. You are so welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for being here, guys. If you do have a question, feel free to retype. I can always come back and answer later. Congrats to my winner, Karen. Yay. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Let me know if you have any questions. And then if you ever need anything, support at learning at the primary pond.com. You can either get to me or one of my team members to help you. We are always happy to help you. Erin says, are the no prep games the same as what's in the back of each week of From Sounds to Spelling? They are not, Erin. They are different. But, of course, if you use the program, you know that you do have plenty of material. So if you're brand new to the program, I would say I wouldn't go for this as well. I mean, this will give you so many options, and I personally am using both. But if you're brand new, just dig into what you have because I did give you so, so much. I give you more than you would need. So you have plenty in here for sure. You are so welcome, Lynn, Julie, Janice, amazing. Okay, Jennifer says, I bought your decodables from TPT. I have 
decodable books that are like different from the ones in From Sounds to Spelling. And so she's wondering how they line up with From Sounds to Spelling. They line up perfectly. So use the same scope and sequence to do those decodables on TPT, even though they're not the same decodables as From Sounds to Spelling, so that if you wanted more, they will fit in perfectly. So you will see exactly, you know, in kindergarten, the same skills. In first grade, the same skills. They'll, they'll fit in perfectly like that. Yes. Okay. Let's see if I missed. A lot for Canadian teachers. Yep, yep. Okay. Just kind of scrolling and making sure I didn't miss anything. You are so welcome, Jennifer. All right, well, I'll let y'all go. Thanks for being here. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. And also don't forget that Monday deadline because that's when the $30 off and the um, like the huge, huge discount on the no prep phonics games is over. So this is a phonics fun week, by the way. I've been sending out freebies and doing all sorts of fun stuff this week. It has been amazing. It's still going on through Monday. If you've been participating, thanks so much for it. It has been so much fun. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all later.